This can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Oh, that looks very sporty. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. Can I take this off your hands? That would be fantastic. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... I come bearing a gift. Really interesting. Whatever we do needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I have never seen that done before. You're good. ..valuable... I, I'm literally speechless. ..and hopefully saleable items. I had to put my glasses on, they're so bright. If Jackie is successful, then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Joking! You are joking! From bashed-up sofas to turfed-out tables, the Altrigan Recycling Centre sees its fair share of rubbish. But here, on a mission to save the best bits, is Warden of Waste, Jackie Joseph. Well, it may look like a load of old rubbish to you, but to me, every car boot could be a potential gold mine. I've got to keep my eyes peeled and dig deep. Jackie's mission is to sift out three items that she thinks have the potential to be scrubbed up and sold on for cash. Hello, hello, hello. What are you throwing away today, then? She's been given special permission to be here, so she'll need to be on her best behaviour. Do you go on the naughty step? Yeah. All the time? Yeah. Oh! James is unloading a bootful, but will what he has send him to the top of the class? Oh, hello there. Oh, hello. Oh, my name's Jackie. What's yours? Oh, I'm James. Lovely to meet you, James. I saw this from afar. Are these yours? Uh, no, they actually belong to my sister-in-law, Judith. Why is she getting rid of them? She got new furniture coming, so oh, I was right. helping her clear out. She's got replacements, then. Yes. Well, what does she use them for? Uh, well, that one there was a TV stand. Now, I think these were for um, CDs and things. She's obviously had good use out of them. Now, it seems um, in good condition. It... Apart from the cat scratches there. Yes. How many cats does your sister-in-law have? She's got three. They're very <laughs> fearsome cats because they've had a good go at that. They are quite big cats. <laughs> so do you think Judith would mind if I took them off your hand? No, she'd be happy about that. That's amazing. So what I'm going to do, James, I'll take these off your hands, I'll keep in touch, and if I'm able to do anything with it, I'll come back and show you, and hopefully show your sister-in-law. We can arrange that. Lovely. OK. Thank I you very much. Oh, James, you never told me it was this heavy. <laughs> it is quite heavy. Oh. Come on, put your upcycling muscles into it. Jackie's bagged a TV unit and CD cabinet, complete with cat scratches. Please, she's taken them on, James. It's nice to see things being reused. I can't walk past a skip without looking in it. Sounds like we've got another recycling buff here, Jackie. Judith's cat, or tigers, really had a good go at these two, especially that TV cabinet. But I still think these have got some life left in them. I just need to get my thinking cap on and maybe I can scratch out an idea that will give these a new lease of life. So, which maker does Jackie have lined up to get their creative claws into this lot? Bruce Forsyth. The transatlantic woodworking wonder, who uses his all-American charm to turn unloved items into must-have masterpieces. When I needed to get in the right headspace for designing, I kind of just shut myself off. So I lock the door, turn off my phone, you know, put some good music on or something, and then I can kind of like just focus in, you know, get inspired. Creatively speaking, I would think the best part about my job would be that I can take somebody's idea or a, a small sketch on a piece of paper and then make that re a reality. And it's that ability to do that is really what I find interesting. He loves a challenge, all right. 
But will Bruce be pushed to his creative limits trying to make something desirable from these clawed cabinets? With one item in the bag... You've thrown away that wine rack? Jackie's pouring over the boots in search of another two. Oh, the spiders, sir, Jackie. Oh, spiders don't scare me. Got to look at every single boot, cos you never know. Debbie's arrived, but will she have what Jackie's looking for? Oh, hi there. That looks interesting. Hi. My name's Jackie. What's yours? Um, Debbie. Lovely to meet you, Debbie. I can see this is a nice shaped little sweet ottoman. Is it yours? Yes, it is. It used to belong to my in-laws, but they passed away, so we took it from the house and we, I guess, upcycled it. So you upcycled it? Yeah. Very good, Debbie. <laughs> it was like a green and gold. And what was the fabric at the top? Um, it's just like a, a, a shiny damask type fabric, um, but we've got two puppies, so they've chewed it. They had a field day, didn't they? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, they love that trim. Are they still puppies? They're a year old. Now. They're a year old. Oh, still young then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They They're like boisterous kids yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can I, and please don't be shocked at this, can I take it off your hands? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> if you can put it to some use, that would be amazing. If I can do something with it, I'll keep in touch, show you what I've done. Is that OK? Yeah, that Come would back be great. And show you. Yeah. yeah. I shall reach in and grab it. I don't think it's heavy. It doesn't look heavy. No, it's not heavy. Even better. <laughs> Jackie's second find is a 1950s ottoman. Please, Debbie. I'd be interested to see what she'll do with it. I still think this has got a chance. But look, it's still, it's still solid. I might be taking a bit of a risk. But you know, I love risky things and I love a challenge. Yeah. So which maker is Jackie entrusting to take on the risky business of upcycling this old ottoman? It's Leanne Treadwell. Leanne is to upholstery what Einstein is to sciencey stuff. Her imaginatively out there colour explosions make every chair that leaves her workshop a masterpiece. Every single colour, I'm not afraid of them, and I don't think anyone should be afraid of colour. There's plenty of joy to be found through your eyeballs if you just splash a bit of colour around. Old chairs are really well made. That means you can keep reupholstering them. You can make it fit into your world for that one little snippet of this entire life. Chairs just keep on living if you let them. Well, Leanne, it might take more than a bit of colour to revive this old ottoman. So, bringing it up to scratch will be no mean feat. With two items secured, Jackie is casing the recycling centre for something she can work on herself. I spy, with my little eye, something beginning with C. A canine? A car boot full of goodies. Oh, I should have got that one. Alex arrived, but will Jackie spy any potential in what he's unloading? Ooh. Oh, hello. I'm Jackie. What's your name? Hi, Jackie. Alec. Alec, lovely to meet you. Are these all yours? Hey, yeah. Well, those are going on the tip. That one in there, I'm going to recover that. Oh, so you're a bit of a, an upcycler, are you? I have been for a long, long time. Have you, Alex? I really like the look of these. I like that you've got three of them. You don't th fancy upcycling these ones, then? I'm not interested in them. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I rather like them. They're kind of like this um, sort of fluted... Have, do you have the bases for them as well? Uh, uh, I've got the bases, but I'm putting on new oh, shades right, okay. on those. Right, so you're keeping the bases, but you want yeah. to get rid of these? Yeah. They're quite good sizes, that's what I think. I think the size of them are quite good. a table lamp, but these are, those two are standard lamps. Standard lamps, yeah. I am so glad I found you, because I would prefer to keep them for myself, rather than them going in there and being crushed. Would you mind if I took them off your hands? With pleasure. I will keep in touch and I'll show you what I've done with them. Is that all right? Great, yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Jackie's final find is a trio of lampshades. You didn't see any use for them, Alec, but do you think Jackie can save them? 
It certainly can be recovered um, with a very nice silk fabric, probably, and some tassel trim around the edge to make them really funky would be great. Oh, I like the sound of funky, Jackie. What a great find. Look at the shape of them. Yes, they're tired. Yes, they've seen better days, but these could be absolutely spectacular. I hope. And with that, Jackie has her items. Bruce will attempt to unlock the potential of the Pine CD and TV cabinets. Leanne will have a huge challenge, adding some creative flair to the old Ottoman. And Jackie has to somehow shine a light on a new future for the three lampshades. Well, Altrincham, you haven't disappointed. I have saved three cracking items from the crusher. Now there's just the small matter of transforming them into money makers. In Sissy, Jackie has sent the TV unit and CD cabinets to woodworking wonder Bruce. So, Bruce, what do you make of them? There's actually a lot here. I mean, they're a bit worse to wear, but underneath of all this finish and uh, cat scratches, I think they are, there's some pretty good furniture, and I've got a few ideas, so I'm looking forward to seeing what she has to say. And that'll be Jackie calling now. Hey, how you doing, Jackie? Hey, Bruce, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm really good, yeah. Great. Did you get the cabinets I sent you? I did. Good find, actually. Um, quite a bit to work with here. I wondered about chopping them up and combining them into one piece of furniture. A large desk, perhaps? You could do. But I think keeping them separate units is the way to go. And I think even taking the CD stand and making two units out of it, so maybe making two bedside tables and then the TV cabinet, making a drinks cabinet out of that. Ooh. I like the sound of that, Bruce. Although they're pine, I would really love them to have a nice, crisp, modern look. OK. Cleaning it up a bit, painting it, freshening it up really kind of modernizing it a bit, but still keeping it looking the same. OK, great. What about budget? We'll say three pieces of furniture, say like, well, the big one's about maybe 600 pounds all in. And I'll, I'll try to keep it under budget, so, you know, I might get some change out of it. Great. 600 pounds sounds like a fair price. I'll see you when I get up there to pick them up. Sounds good. All right, talk to you soon. Thanks, so, Bruce. Bye. bye. So, Bruce's plan is to try and turn the units from Cat Scratched to the Cat's Pajamas. These really need a nice updating and modernization, but overall they're pretty good. I mean, aside from those Cat Scratches and the bad finish, they're not bad pieces of furniture, and I'll really be able to like revitalize these and rejuvenate them and give them a nice second home. Let's hope so. Bruce has a top budget of £600 to create a pair of bedside units and a drinks cabinet. But giving them the modern look Jack is pining for may test Bruce more than he thinks. In Bristol, Jack is en route to Leanne's workshop with the Ottoman in tow. Excited to get stuck into a new project, Leanne? I'm really looking forward to seeing what Jack has brought today. I'm hoping it's going to be full of potential. And, you know, a challenge. I love a challenge. Here it is. Yes, it's tatty. Yes, it's seen better days. And, yes, I'm going to give it to Leanne. Well, she did say she was up for a challenge. Leanne, look what I've brought for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jackie. Ta-da! This poor thing. Oh, what's happened to you? <laughs> it's bad, but it's got a nice shape. I think that's why I liked it. I know externally it looks horrendous, like it's been yeah. dragged through a hedge backwards. Definitely well-loved, but structurally, this, this, this is good. Although it is a, a cute ottoman, it also can be seating as well, I suppose. Maybe at the end of a bed. It can fit so many places, which helps me... Well, yeah. it doesn't really help me make any decisions about what to do with it. <laughs> it just kind of needs a total overhaul, doesn't it? It just all needs colour, texture and a bit of love. The actual structure of it mm -hmm. is totally sturdy and fine. So it is a case of just making... I think just accentuating these features. What are we talking budget-wise? £200. Might do it. £200, that is fair. There's a lot of work to be done there. Well, Leanne, as ever, thank you very much. 
And I shall see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Bye. Jackie. See you. Biggest challenge for this one is deciding on how I'm going to accentuate these features without going so over the top that it looks like I've put it in a silly costume. Leanne has a budget of £200 for a top-to-toe overhaul of the ottoman. But will she manage to strike the right balance of on-trend rather than silly costume? With Leanne and Bruce ready to rock, in London, Jackie is about to get to work on the lampshades. What bright ideas have you got for this lot? And although they're in good shape, they're pretty boring, aren't they? So I'm going to give them a little bit of glamour, a bit of decadence, a bit of pizzazz. And I think they're all going to be individual. Um, not sure what I'm going to do, but they are going to be individual. But I'm going to clean them first. So Jackie's plan is to spruce up the shades. And her first job is to give them a good clean. A few ideas are coming. Somehow fringing, maybe some feathers. Maybe some colourful fabric on another one. And maybe some paint. Yeah. Jackie is getting started on her first shade. There's definitely no going back from this. She's using a water-based black paint to banish the beige. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> this may not be for the faint-hearted, but it will certainly be a showstopper. She's using a foam brush, which she hopes will give even coverage. Right, so that's the first coat. Doesn't look bad, does it? Well, if it's that dark after one coat, will any light be able to shine through the shade? While it dries, Jack is moving on to shade number two. I've made loads of lampshades before in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but I've never recovered one like this before. Jack is hoping to jazz up the second shade with a patchwork fabric design and is starting by making a template. It's a little bit fiddly. I just have to really take my time because this template has got to be perfect. Right, so that's done. 10 million pins have to go. So then now, fabric. Well, they are bright. So we've got eight panels on the lampshade, four fabrics. So I'm going to cut two of each of the fabrics and they're going to go side by side. Boom. You know that's going to look good. Um, we might have to trust you on that, Jackie. Is that too much? Well, it's certainly individual and that's what you're going for, isn't it? Oh, well, I'm going to go for it anyway. OK, in for a penny. Right, so they're all pinned. Wow, that would make a fab skirt. <laughs> There's no going back now. She needs to have got the precise template measurements spot on. They're all stitched together. Once it fits on that lampshade, what you're going to do is give it another stitch line just in front of your original stitch line that just holds the fabric and gives it more durability. But before I do that, I've got to fit it on the lampshade. The moment of truth. If the patchwork cover doesn't fit the shade, she'll be back to square one. Right, this is the first fitting. Actually, it fits rather nicely. Obviously, I've got to cut and glue all the fabric in place, but I'm really happy with that. Do you think it's too colourful? Have I gone too far? Might be too late to worry about that now. So far, Jackie's spent £20 on this project. She's aiming for bold, but will her radical revamp be too much for these classic shades? In Sissy, Bruce is about to get to work modernising the pine cabinets. He's starting with the CD stand that he's planning to turn into two bedside units. What I need to do is I need to cut this cabinet here. And I'm going to get... This is going to be a cabinet. That's going to be the bottom. 
and that's the right way up that one. And what I'll do is I'll make new wooden tops, solid wood, maybe oak or something like that. I'm gonna put paint it, put new hardware on it, and uh, just generally clean them up. Sounds like a lot of work. Get to it. Bruce is removing the internal structure so he has the bare pine carcass to work with. There we go. All I've got to do now is find my center line exactly and scribe a line all the way around and then I can cut on that line. Bruce is measuring out and marking where he needs to make his cuts. I didn't do very well in math, so I've got to use my my uh, phone. Well, let's hope your calculations are right, or the new units won't be the exact pair you're hoping for. Bruce is using a circular saw to make the all-important cuts. Whoa! Caught it. <laughs> oh, good. We wouldn't want it to get any bumps or scratches. Well, any more bumps or scratches. All right, that was a success. Cabinet one, cabinet two. Um, I'm happy with that worked. What I'm gonna do is just gonna test fit the drawers, make sure everything still looks good. Um, the one thing I don't like is this small detail down here. So what I'm gonna do is on both cabinets, I'm gonna remove this piece of wood, cut it on the table saw, cut it on the chop saw, just kind of clean up the design a bit. Bruce needs to give his new bedside units the modern edge Jack is asked for. And he's hoping that simplifying the pine bases will give them a less chunky, more contemporary look. Let's see where we're, uh, we're going with this one. There we go. So that fits nice. I think it looks a bit cleaner. His first cabinet is taking shape, but it looks like the second might take a bit more work. I'm not sure if they had a tiger or a cat, but definitely seen a little wear here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up a wood filler and uh, put it in these scratches. While the filler dries, Bruce is cutting down pieces of reclaimed oak that will become the new tops of the bedside units. I think they're gonna be perfect. I think once they're on some legs and got some paint on them, new hardware, the top's finished, I think they're gonna be great. Now, another project is this TV cabinet and uh, Jackie's got me working overtime on this one, so gotta stay busy. Keeping busy won't be a problem, Bruce. You still have an entire drinks cabinet to create. In Bristol, Leanne is about to get to work on the Ottoman. I think it's going to end up being really cute, but obviously it's so tired. So the first thing I need to do is remove all of this that's damaged and worn. Jackie and Leanne agreed this little box was in desperate need of colour and texture. So her first job is to get stripping. It shouldn't be too painful because there's only tiny little nails in here. The structure's sound, but it's good riddance to the existing woven paper and fabric. We've got another layer. All of this needs to go. And then I can properly assess the frame underneath, just in case there's any joints that need tightening. See, I can see that joint there. That needs some attention. My impatience has started kicking in, can you tell? <laughs> oh, it looks like you're enjoying yourself, Leanne. I quite like being destructive, yeah. It's definitely the best part of being creative. <laughs> oh, yeah. It suddenly feels a lot more fragile. Oh dear, the only thing the Ottoman had going for it was its solid structure. But Leanne's starting to doubt how sturdy it actually is. I'm going to finish off what the cat started. Prospective <laughs> pet owners don't be put off. Not all furry friends will use your furniture as a scratching post. I want to remove all these nails, but I don't know which ones because some are actually holding the whole thing together. Is there going to be anything left of this box by the time it's stripped? Another job has been discovered. <laughs> this feels like it might break with someone's weight. It's quite flimsy. And it's also just got a lot of movement. It's slightly bent and bowed. 
I just feel like to give it a bit more durability, that needs to be replaced. So what was supposed to be a simple recover and revamp is turning into a full-on restoration job. Putting her structural worries to one side, Leanne is moving on to picking out fabrics. I've got a box of goodies. Look at all these beautiful trims. I mean, they are just stunning. This one, gorgeous, because it has a, an almost like a ribbon as part of it. I'm going to see if that one will fit. Quick little measure. Seems to want to stay on there already. Maybe this is the one. We could go green. And I'm also thinking that this beautiful golden colour, that might be it. All I gotta do is order the fabric and just hope it's not too expensive. I might have to get on the phone to Jackie and say, can I have a little bit extra? <laughs> if a new lid wasn't enough to blow the budget, Leanne's choice of expensive fabric might just do it. Jackie's chances of making a profit could be slipping away. In London, Jack is putting the finishing touches to the lampshades. Now that is what you call drama. Love it. When Jackie found the shades, they were beige, bland, and about to be binned. But now. Jack has created a trio of standout shades, each one individual in style. She's used faux feathers, a colourful patchwork fabric and trendy tassels to give them the bold and decadent look she was striving for. Jack has added light fittings so the shades can be hung either from a ceiling light or used on a lampstand. It's a big transformation but will prospective buyers light up when they see them? I wanted them all to be individual. I think I've created that. I wanted drama. I wanted a bit of decadence. I got a bit of both. I am so pleased with how these lampshades turned out. When Jackie met Alec, he was saying goodbye to his shades. What's your name? Hi, Jackie, Alec. Those are going on the tip. That one in there, I'm going to recover that. Alec was no stranger to upcycling. Bit of a, an upcycler, are you? I've been for a long, long time. You didn't th fancy upcycling these ones, then? I'm not interested in that's why I'm here. <laughs> but he was happy for Jackie to take them on. It certainly can be recovered um, with a very nice silk fabric, probably, and some tassel trim round the edge to make them really funky. Well, Alec, great minds think alike. They're certainly funky now. After being advertised online, one shade was bought by Dawn, an interior shop in Yeovil. I think this lampshade will be snapped up. Someone's going to fall in love with it when they spot the unique styling and the different fabrics that have been used. And another shade was snapped up by Hannah at a hotel in Norfolk. I didn't think I could possibly be this pleased about a black lampshade with tassels, but it's surprisingly cool. That's two sold, but did Jackie manage to sell the third? Jackie's in Altrincham to show Alec her handiwork and hopefully pass on some profit. Hi, Alec. Hi, Jackie. How nice are you? Nice to see you again. Lovely to see you again. Are yeah. you well? Yeah, good, good. So the last time we met at the recycling centre, you were throwing away three empire-shaped lampshades, yeah. weren't you? They were quite old, weren't they? They were old and they were very tatty. Well, it was something, actually, that I took on, Alec. Right? Yeah. So would you like to see what I've done with those uh, three tired shades? Certainly. So this is the first one. Right, real jazzy flat floral pattern. Oh, with a... Is that a parrot? parakeet? Toucan. <laughs> the black I like as well. I love the skirt on the plain black one. And then this one, faux ostrich feathers, individually glued on. Ooh, that's unusual, different. So what do you think? Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Well done. I'm really pleased that you like them. I, I enjoyed working on them, actually. Right. I really did. Good. And other people enjoyed them, too, because they were actually sold in various different places. Right. And, Alec, I've got for you £136.34. 
Right. For your old lampshades that you're okay. about to throw away. Well, thank you. So what might you do with the money? If, if you gave it to me, I'll pass it on to the RNLI. So is the RNLI a, a charity that you've supported for some time? I've supported it, and my, grand, my late grandma supported it for a long, long time, and I sort of got hooked into it with, through her when I was a little boy. <laughs> well, look, it was lovely to catch up with you, and thank you so much once again. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Jackie's costs came to £43.66. All three shades were sold for a total of £180, leaving Alec with a profit of £136.34p that he's going to donate to a lifeboat search and rescue charity. With a glowing set of sails for the shades, Jack is in Bristol to see if Leanne's been able to give new life to the old Ottoman. This is a great little project. I really hope Jackie likes its cheekiness. Do you think it's a cheeky one, this one? Well, that old Ottoman was seriously lacking in style, although it was sturdy. I really hope Leanne's managed to give it the TLC it needs to get it back into someone's home. When Jackie found the old Ottoman, it was in tatters and about to be turfed in the skip. But now... It's a cute and contemporary storage solution, thanks to Leanne's creative redesign. She's taken care of the structural wobbles and has replaced the lid to ensure it's safe to sit on, as well as being stylish. Leanne recovered the ottoman in a golden yellow woolen fabric in the hopes of achieving a softer look. She's opted for a brushed ribbon trim in an attempt to create a contrasting pop of colour. And for some added flair, Leanne's finished it off with a pom-pom decoration. Inside, the box has been painted in a fresh pale grey and, of course, all of the upholstery meets fire safety standards. But will Jackie be taken with its new look? Leanne? <gasps> Oh, that looks amazing. I don't know what I expected, but I love it. That's good. I knew you, uh, you liked the colours. And obviously, it's all been inspired by the, the fringing here that was donated. I love this fabric. Is it wool? This is a wool fabric. It's really beautiful to work with. And, of course, it's just the perfect colour and softness. I think it can really fit in someone's home. And the pom-poms. <gasps> That's so clever. Surprise pom-poms that... They're the stays that hold the box lid open. <gasps> Did you have to put any extra elements in there? Any sort of something to give it more rigidity? What did you do? I had to replace the piece of wood here and tighten up these joints because they just fell apart as I took the wood off. OK, I left you with a budget of £200. How did we do? Because of the kind and generous donation of this trim that kind of inspired the whole scheme of this box, I actually managed to do it cheaper so I can come in under budget at £175. You know, I like when things come under budget. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. So £175, thank you. Thanks, take Bye. care. Bye, Jackie. This project's totally unique, and I was experimenting so much with all these kind of fun features, but Jackie totally got it. Wow, what an amazing transformation. Leanne has brought that little Ottoman from lacklustre to full of personality. I love it. At the recycling centre, Debbie's Ottoman caught Jackie's eye. So it belonged to my in-laws. Um, I think they've, I don't know, probably had it since the 1950s. It wasn't in the best condition. But we've got two puppies, so they've chewed it. <laughs> They had a field day, didn't they? Yes, unfortunately, yeah. But that didn't deter Jackie, and Debbie was keen to see how it would turn out. I'd be interested to see what she'll do with it. Well, Debbie, Leanne tackled this one, and you might not recognise it now. Jackie shared photos of the Ottoman online, but did it sell? Jack is in Bowden to catch up with Debbie to show her the transformation and hand over the profit. Hi. Hi, Debbie, how are you? Very good, thank you. 
Lovely to see you. Yes, and you? Did you ever wonder what I might have done with the old Ottoman? Yeah, I'd be really interested to see. Well, it was something that I um, took to a brilliant upholsterer in Bristol called Leanne. And let me show you exactly what she's done. Oh, wow. That's really funky, actually. She's kind of modernised it, hasn't she? I love all the pom-poms on the bottom. Quite like it back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Oh, Leanne's going to be so pleased. It hasn't sold yet. When it does, any profits will be going to you. What might you do with that money, Debbie? OK, so my father-in-law was involved with the Blind Veterans Association, particularly the one in Liverpool, and they were very kind to him and his wife, so I think we'd like it to go to them. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, Debbie, look, it was lovely to see you again. And you? And thank you for allowing me to take the Ottoman. Oh, you're very welcome. Keep me posted. I will keep you posted. OK. Take care. Bye-bye. The end's costs to transform the Ottoman came to £175. The Ottoman is still for sale, but Jackie will be back in touch with Debbie as soon as there's a profit to send her way. With two items transformed, Jack is in Sissit to find out how Bruce has got on with the pine units. I'm really pleased with the outcome. I was a bit apprehensive at first when I first saw them, and trying to modernize something that was a bit outdated um, was a bit of a challenge, but I'm really happy with how they came out. Now, the stuff I sent to Bruce was a bit shabby, to say the least, but he said he's going to get a pair of bedside units and a drinks cabinet out of them. Now, I left him with a big budget, so I'm hoping for a big transformation. When Jackie found the bulky pine cabinets, they had a one-way ticket to the skip. But now... They're unrecognisable thanks to Bruce's modern makeover. The redundant CD cabinet has been split into two petite bedside tables, and Bruce has added oak tops and plated steel hardware to try and give a sleeker, streamlined appearance. The TV unit is now ready for cocktail hour as a generous drinks cabinet. The old double doors have been removed and Bruce has repurposed the original top as a large drop-down door. He's given all three items a coat of teal wood stain in the hope a pop of colour would create the modern edge Jackie was after. But will she think he's done enough? Bruce? Hey, Jackie. <gasps> no. Bruce, this is never the same collection of goodies I left. It is. <gasps> That's incredible. How did you do this? All right, we'll start with the CD cabinet first. Did you literally chop it in half? Yes. I took the top off, made that a bottom, and then I cut that detail off because it was a bit, like, outdated, that detail. That's right. And then, um, obviously, took the drawers out, sanded them all down, painted them. And then the legs. Yeah, the legs are cute, aren't they? The legs are fab, and this beauty. This is quite a bit more work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the cats had taken their time to this one. Yeah, really I remember that. that so I made a new piece to replace the original. Um, took the original top that was on it. Yeah. Used that as this door. So this comes down That's as a, so as a cool. drinks cabinet. There's two magnets in here that attach it. So there's a that. magnet there so that holds it yeah, up. Yeah, it holds it in place. A couple coats of paint, and uh, there you go. How have we done budget-wise? We stayed on budget. So we're sticking to the budget of £600. Yes. I'm going to get this picked up, Bruce. Okay. And, yeah, well done. All right, thank Fantastic you. Fantastic transformation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Jackie was really pleased. I'm really pleased. She brought these really rough items. She's got beautiful items walking out the door, and they're going to take pride in place in somebody's house very soon. Bruce has knocked it out of the park. I didn't know what to expect, but what he has created is spectacular. When Jackie saw James, she couldn't let his cabinets be crushed. Are these yours? Uh, no, they actually belong to my sister-in-law. Why is she getting rid of them? She got new furniture coming, so oh, I was wow. helping her clear out. The cabinets did have some damage. How many cats does your sister-in-law have? She's got three. They're very <laughs> fearsome cats because they've had a good go at that. Jackie whisked them away and James was delighted. 
it's nice to see things being reused. I can't walk past a skip without looking in it. Well, James, Bruce has certainly given them a new use. Jackie shared photos online, and before long, the drinks cabinet was sold to a vintage shop in Norfolk. Her manager, Linda, loves it. I love the colour of the cabinet and the fact that it's a really beautiful blue and the brass fittings stand out against the blue. I love the fact the cabinet has been upcycled. It really fits in with the ethos of Vegas Vintage and what we do here. The drinks cabinet found a new home, but did Jackie manage to shift the bedside units? Jackie's in Timperley to show James and Judith the cabinet's new look and hopefully pass on a profit. Oh, How are you both? Very good. Fine, thank you. Oh, lovely to see you. The last time we met, James was helping you, Judith, throw away two bits of furniture, but actually they belonged to you, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. They were... They solid, were well made. Solid timber. There was good wood they were made from. What do you think I might have done with them? I think maybe, like, a drinks cabinet. Well, it was something um, that I sent to a designer called Bruce in Yorkshire. Right. Okay. And would you like to see what he's done? That's for good indeed. Oh, wow. 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 I love the colour. Right, so he made the CD unit into two bedside tables. Yeah. And you were right, Judith, he's created a drinks cabinet. Absolutely it is amazing. amazing. That. The bar was sold to a vintage and antique shop in Norfolk, and the bedside units were sold to a private buyer. So I have got £155 for you for your old scratched up oh, wow. units. That is brilliant. Absolutely it is brilliant. Terrific. What might you do with that money? Probably buy something for my flat and obviously give Jim a little bit of something as well. You might get a pint out of it. I might, yeah. <laughs> well, look, it was great to catch up with both again. And you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks That's all right. Bye. Bye. Bruce's costs came to £600. The bedside units and drinks cabinet were sold for a total of £755. Leaving a profit of £155 that Judith is going to put towards something for her flat. Lovely. Jackie saved three items from being lost forever. The lampshades are now super luxe. The pine cabinets are rocking a modern new look. And the old ottoman has been given an opulent overhaul. Seeing things saved from the brink of the skip never fails to put a smile on my face. Leanne and Bruce have done a stellar job with my old items. And what's more, we've made some money for nothing along the way.